last video we showed you how to set up the QR P2P cloud based scanning and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up the auto DDNS which is the free DDNS server provided by the Paramount DVR and MVRs. Now the two can be used together and when setting up the auto DDNS you have to do your standard typical networking which is basically setting up your static local area network IP address, defining your ports, logging into your router uh, doing the port forwarding and then going to the auto DDNS and just an, uh, choosing a name and applying it. From there you'd be able to uh, access the DVR that way and you'd have full configurability. Now again they can both be turned on at the same time so if you wanted auto DDNS and NAT it's not one or the other they can definitely be both set up but I just wanted to go over so you are aware if you chose not to use the NAT and wanted to do the standard networking procedure this would be how to do so. So again, simply make sure you have a network connection into the unit, go to your start button, go to settings, go to the network menu, and the first menu you're going to work with is your TCP IP. So again, as mentioned before, by default, both obtain IP and obtain DNS are automatically checked. Now, if using the DDNS, we want to disable the DHCP factor for both of these. That way, when doing the port forwarding, your local IP doesn't change on you and the port forwarding is now null and void. It's very important to have a static LAN when doing port forwarding because if the unit's rebooted or the router is rebooted that IP address can change and then the port forwarding was done to one static LAN IP address and your machine may pick up another. So once you uncheck it go ahead and input your information into the screen which is your address, your subnet and your gateway. Make sure you know your network information before inputting it into the, into the screen and for your preferred and altered alternate DNS servers we recommend you use Google's so that will be 8.8.8.8 .8 just one eight not double eights for the preferred and for the uh, alternate it's going to be 8.8.4.4 .4. so go ahead and hit that input, input that information and hit apply to save Next, you're going to want to define your ports. So you click on port across the top, and by default, these are your three ports that you have to open 80, 60, 36, and 554 for your RTSP. The HTTP port is used to access the device from the web browser and from your mobile app. The server port is used to access your device from the Paramount CMS for the PC or your Mac PC. And the RTSP port is used to stream the video to both, whether it be a CMS on a PC, your mobile app, or from the web browser. It's your real-time streaming protocol. Now, when in this screen, we always recommend changing the default HTTP port from 80 to anything else. We usually recommend 9000 as that's not a common port that's used, but you can change it to anything you'd like. Once you go ahead and change that port, and we'll go ahead and change it here, we're going to make it 9000 in this case, hit apply to save. Now that you've set up your local area network, your static LAN local area network, and you've defined your ports, you jump into your router and you do the port forwarding. Um, in every router it's different, but basically you're going to look for advanced and firewall settings or port forward settings. And from there you'd port forward these three ports to your local IP address that you had set up. Once that's done, you save those settings and you can go to yougetsignal.com. That's Y O U G E T S I G N A L.com. Yougetsignal.com. The first link on that page is your port forwarding tester. It's a third party page, it's not proprietary to Invid. Um, when you go there, it's automatically going to pull up your WAN IP address and you can go ahead and input your three ports one by one. If you go ahead and hit, so you'd input 9000, hit the check, and it's either going to come back with a green flag telling your port is open or a red flag telling your port is closed. As long as you get the green flag for all three telling you your port is open, you've done the port forwarding successfully and you can move on to setting up the DDNS. If you do get three red flags back or a, a single red flag out of the three, you might want to go back and check one of the individual ports. Make sure you, you didn't make a mistake on the port forwarding within the router. If all three come back, one thing you want to look for is some modems 
aren't just a modem they are a modem router combination so if you did the port forwarding in a third party router that's connected to this modem router combination you might have to call up your internet service provider and ask them to put the modem into bridge mode bridge mode basically opens it up and then allows those port forwardings from your third party router to flow through if it it is a modem router combination and it isn't in bridge mode that's why the ports aren't scan as an, uh, scanning as open because it's hitting that modem router combination that has all ports closed and it's not going out to the network so once you've done that and you've confirmed all three of your ports are open simply come back to the network menu start button settings network click on DDNS across the top go ahead and enable it and the first choice choice is autoddns.com now that's ours that's a free service um, no charge at all so you leave that be and then basically here where it says device domain you go ahead and choose a unique name to ensure that it's not taken by another user uh, in this case we'll go ahead and choose EJDVR19 okay adding a number sometimes helps it make it a little, little bit more unique and then you'd hit apply to save now once you're done and you saved and again your ports are all verified as open the way you'd access the DVR is going to a web browser whether it be Internet Explorer or Firefox make sure it's not Edge uh, Edge is the little blue E that's similar to Internet Explorer but the Internet Explorer is the light blue E with the star or a Mac PC using Safari or um, Firefox as well open up the web browser type in HTTP colon forward slash forward slash ejdvr19 at autoddns.com colon 9000 you always have to put the port number at the end of the DDNS name the DDNS does not remember the port number so once you put in your DDNS name always remember the colon HTTP port at the end so again to access it it's HTTP colon forward slash forward slash ejdvr19 at autoddns.com colon 9000 connect you'll get to your username and uh, password screen and you'll you're now officially connected through the DDNS